board for the Whiteley Personnel Committee. And the first item on the agenda is to review and vote for the minutes on February 12th. And it's been pointed out to me that there needs to be a correction, and that is that Betty was not here for that meeting, and it says that she was. Yeah, I think I move that we accept the minutes as amended. And so, do we need to look at that motion? Is that yeah, it was right here. Well, it's probably to accept the minutes of the previous meeting. Why did motion? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you? Did you do it, no, Brian? Yeah, I did. Can I see a copy of those? Um, I copy of may those I stuff? see a copy of yours? Thank you yeah. so much. This is which? February 12th. Yeah. It was the very last. Yeah, it was the 12th. I came yeah, in that was the 13th. The that yeah. was the last that one. Was I came to see you and yes. Brian. Yeah. 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 Right. We also need to discuss the embassy A through K. Right. We didn't get to come. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Well, then I guess, did you make a motion I as motion to, I had moved to accept as a, as amended. As amended. And Brian has those amendments. Yeah. Okay. Then based on that, do I have a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes as amended. And I'll do a roll call vote for those that were here. Joyce? Aye. Susan? Aye. And myself? Aye. Okay, now we got that squared away. Okay. We will jump right back into where we left off and draft policies section L. Yep, section L is our next section. Go free workplace policy. I did not have anything. I had a question on the procedures. And that was the last sentence where um, should notify the town select board. Should remember we had the issue of if, especially like we're dealing with the librarian or the water department, I think we should keep the language just the same as. So I don't remember whether we said as the respective supervisor or the super, I, I forgot how we, we worded it. We had language that we liked. Right. Does that encompass that? That was, I think, the only thing I had within that policy, yes. I had one thing to talk about was under prohibit, uh, prohibitions. Does the following is prohibited? The non prescriptive use of controlled substances or marijuana. So, does that mean it doesn't talk about at the workplace? Is that saying town employees can't use recreational marijuana on their own time? But it, it says to the extent that such a use impairs ability to perform their job, adversely impacts the safety, or affects the reputation of the general public. So if they do it in private, like they're off the clock, and it doesn't hit those three, are we okay with the language? So are one and four right. duplicative? Yeah, On just take out one, maybe. Right. Do we take out? Yeah, yeah. One, one, one is, repeat, is repeated in four. Okay. Because one is sort of a blanket prohibition, and then four is like a blanket prohibition with exceptions. Yeah. Or it, it, it's further, it's further modified. So, yeah. 
So if we just eliminate one, it sort of puts all non-prescription controlled substances, marijuana and alcohol in the same in the same category where marijuana and alcohol are legal, but non-prescriptive controlled substances are largely not. So it might be better to just cross marijuana out of number one and then uh, cross the non-prescriptive use of uh, the controlled substances out of number four, right? Because they're sort of treating them differently. One of them is just, we're not saying you're allowed to use non-prescriptive ones and, but as long as it doesn't impair your job and blah, blah, blah. That one's just blanket prohibited. But isn't it still redundant? Even without marijuana in one, just to say non-prescriptive use of controlled substances. That, that's why I'm saying take it out of number four. Um, uh, non-prescriptive use of, just take out the controlled substances, right? Because they're not legal to take, it's not legal to take controlled substances, illegal, you might want to say non-prescriptive use of otherwise illegal controlled substances, but it, it seemed like to me the difference in controlled substance and marijuana is that, you know, Heroin controlled substance, but if you had a doctor's prescription, it'd be okay. And I don't know the doctors prescribe heroin. Um, I don't think they prescribe cocaine. I don't, but I feel like non-prescriptive use of controlled substances kind of covers illegal drugs. Oh, I see. And then in four, say non-prescriptive use of marijuana or any use of alcohol to the extent that it impairs blah 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 blah. Without yeah. controlled substances, yes. control. They can't do controlled substances on their own time either. They can't do marijuana or alcohol when it impacts their work. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that seems to be the place where. Um, is if we just cross out one, it's kind of like okay, you're on with your non your non prescriptive use of controlled substances. Uh, it's just as long as it doesn't impair your work. And I think we do have the right to test people, right? I think somewhere in here, we do have the right to test people for illegal drugs. And I think, my, I mean, it, that's, it seems more consistent to leave those, um, uh, you know, illegal controlled substances in as prohibited by our policy, even though they're also prohibited by law. So, does that make any sense? Yeah. Yes. And now I'm following, yeah. So number one would end at the word substances, it'd be a period and we'd remove for marijuana. And number four, you're recommending just say the non-prescriptive use of marijuana or it can go on from there. Yeah. Correct, okay. Then is everybody in agreement on that? Well, okay. Uh, opioids. Opioids are a controlled substance, but I assume we are okay with somebody using, you know, somebody taking them if they're on prescription. If we take that language out, oh, but that's a the non prescriptive. It's got to be prescribed. So it's okay if it's prescribed. Okay. Yeah, or we could just change number four to the prescriptive use of controlled, pres you know, proscriptive use. We could just take out the non in number four. Aren't workers, employees allowed to take prescribed drugs as long as it doesn't interfere with their job performance? Right. Or maybe not. Yeah, so I guess the question is, if we just um, do we uh, can we prohibit prescribed controlled substances if it affects someone's job? I'm not sure. Yes, pretty yeah. sure you, you can if it affects their job. Yeah, pretty sure you can in that situation. Yeah, so then maybe just take out the word. Um, oh, okay, got it now. Yeah, I see. Take what out you're... the non. Yeah. <laughs> or the prescript prescriptive and non-prescriptive because 
But prescription mm -hmm. non prescription no, yeah, yeah. is, nope, is nope. as far as nope. 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 No. Yeah. I mean, so we just don't want people driving around on painkillers if they're operating our heavy machinery and so on. Right. Yeah, I think four should yeah. have the word non come. I think you're right because non prescriptive is almost by definition prohibited. So, yeah. I mean, it's really just another way of saying illegal drugs. Yeah, yeah, yep. So, are you clear on that, Brian? Yeah. Okay. I had one question on under procedures. The first sentence, employees who are convicted of substance-related violations under state or federal law in the workplace. Yeah, I don't think they would. Yeah, we'd think the, the uh, department head would know about it if it happened in the workplace. <laughs> So that's, I guess. In the workplace seems like it doesn't belong there. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Like if this were to happen outside on your own time, you got busted for state or federal uh, substance related violation, um, then you have to come in and inform us is what it, we'd right. like it to say. Regardless of where it happened. It does seem like in the workplace could be removed and we'd still be happy with it. Yep. Okay. Yep, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And then we had talked about, Keith, you mentioned something about the under the, was it the employee assistance program or was it the other one? The only thing I mentioned was the towns. You know, board. not everybody reports to the town select board. Right. If they're not the governor and body of that employee. And un so under the employee assistance program paragraph on the bottom page, I would recommend to say make that this is the third going on to the fourth line. They contact the town administrator for a referral to the town's EAP. Yeah. Yeah. So the town administrator is going to have that information. Yeah. Yep. Readily available. Yeah. And that's all. I, the only other things that I have for that. So appendix M. Another another Berlin. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no. I didn't have too much to just have the town of Berlin in there in the third paragraph, but it's really um... yep. Oh, sorry. You already said that. Sorry. Yeah, there were a couple of those that we came across last time. Yeah, I missed last time, so sorry about that. Oh, no. In the complaints paragraph, first sentence, um, for any employee, male, female, or non-binary, why do you need male, female, or non-binary? For any employee, period, uh, not period, but it violates for any employee to discriminate. I, yeah, I don't know why that. I think you're right. <clears throat> Just go employee, comma, and then 
think that um, shouldn't matter. It's just any employee. Right. We're just trying to be inclusive. That's the But I, I agree with you, that should go. Yeah, the way to be inclusive is not to define it to any employee. That's it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Under the harassment, that bottom paragraph, same thing, it should be back to that same language, however, where did we did it with department heads or because some employees would not go to the select board. Yeah, governing authority. I can't remember the language we used. Pointing, uh, pointing, appointing appointing authority. Uh, pointing authority, maybe. Yeah. However, we, I, yeah. I just know that that was another spot to be changed. Under disciplinary action, if it's determined that inappropriate conduct is committed, we will pay. Who's the we? Uh, I don't like it when they start talking in we's. Yeah, it's like who's we's the, and ours. Who's the we? You're one of the town employees, right? And how, about, how about by an employee? Yeah. Um, we'll take such action. Yeah. And then, then as we deem appropriate, should probably be as deemed appropriate. And this is presumably because it's disciplinary action. It uh, refers back to the complaints are being made to the um appointing board it's the appointing board who's doing the the deeming and the uh, right. uh mm -hmm. and the and the taking of action and mm -hmm. do people think that that's clear maybe where it says we will take such action as is appropriate what the we is really the appointing board. Is that so? Maybe we just thought of, that might make it clear replacing we with. Oh, yeah. 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 Instead of a town to an appointing. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the following paragraph is a problem now that we're using you. If you believe you've been subjected. As opposed to an employee believes. So. Yeah. If an employee believes they have been subjected to any type of harassment or discrimination, they may file a formal complaint. Right. Either they or both. Not, yeah. <laughs> right. They do not have they to file. They do not have to file. In order to your complaint investigated. Yeah. I'm just curious that here for this policy, we have a form embedded in here that they have to, uh, if it's, is it this one? Yeah. 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 That they have to acknowledge receipt of the policy. Not the form, not the first form is the form that they can use to report, but the second form is acknowledgement of receipt of the policy. There are other places in this document where we say they have to acknowledge receipt, but we don't provide a form. It just was inconsistent. We had one just a couple of minutes ago. Um, was it drug policy? There's one where we say, 
that they have to acknowledge and we don't give them a form. And I don't know, do we give individual forms to everything or is the final acknowledgement because there's a final form at the end say, I got this one, I got that one, I got that one. It would be simpler if we had a one form for acknowledging you got the whole packet. Right. But I wonder if there's a reason why there's a special one for the anti-harassment, anti-discrimination. Is there something in the law that says we need to specifically get a signature on that? I don't, that I don't know the answer, but. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that either, but the easy way we used to solve this, which may or may not be easy in this situation, but it's a pretty small town and a pretty small number of employees, is we would just, at the law firm I work for, just type in at the bottom, receipt acknowledged, and yeah, you get it every step of the way so the record is complete, but maybe that's too much for this. I don't I don't know. The the you know work the day-to-day -day workings, but just to have receipt acknowledged put at the bottom anytime someone has to submit something to some department and we usually would put you know name and title so they'd write that in and again it might be too much but doesn't seem that hard It's, I would suggest we try to find out if there's a reason that this separately needs to be signed. And if so, are there any others that require a specific separate form? <clears throat> I know in my conversations with, with HRS, they, they were talking about how it's said to refract the trainings on harassment and anti discrimination. Um, you know, they do, if it's yearly trainings or every couple of year trainings that they that they do on that, because it's probably the most common, I would guess it's probably the most common violation of the personnel policies. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it could also be that it's just they sign that every, every time after there's like a separate refresher training or something. I don't know. But okay, I can ask. If someone Sorry. Like... Sorry. Yeah, I was off track there. Excuse me. I was going to say if a new employee came on, the likelihood of that person reading the harassment policy right then and there when they receive it being a small section, you could sign off that you've you understand that, whereas you're not likely to read the entire yeah. personnel policy and say you understand it all and you're willing to sign that you understand the whole thing right then and there. Right. Well, this, you're not signing to say you understand the whole thing. You're just acknowledging that you've received it. Received it. Okay. Yeah. All right. But a lot of times someone is going to be cautious and not want to sign it until they read it. Even though it's, yeah, no, yeah, people can and should be cautious about signing things, but um, that it doesn't re require us to have a signature that says, "I understand this all." <laughs> That's, yeah. Okay. Well, then we need to just get clarification on that. Mix in. First file was presented file two. The only thing I had was the second to the last paragraph: violent actions on town offices. 
<laughs> Mine was that one. I assume I should say violent actions on town properties. Or I think towns towns or something. Or in town in town <laughs> yeah. I would just leave it in town property. Yeah, I think town property is more broad. Or well on town business. Because that could be off property. Yeah. It does seem odd to have nonviolent tossed in there. I mean, it's it's really any unlawful actions committed by employees, right? Because if we say both violent and nonviolent, then it, it's no longer about violence, mm -hmm. right? Point. So uh, this is really about workplace violence. I mean, I don't know that the whole that the sentence needs to be there. Um, although I suppose if you're just trying to emphasize what's in the first sentence, you don't need nonviolent in there. Unlawful violent actions committed by employees or members of the public on town property will be subject to prosecution as appropriate. If you're trying to, it's I mean, if you take out or nonviolent, it doesn't mean we won't prosecute nonviolent offenses. But if the purpose of that sentence is to kind of give further details on, well, not tolerated or ignored, right? What does it mean to be not tolerated or ignored? Well, if it's unlawful, we may well prosecute you as appropriate. Um, so the the nonviolent doesn't look right. It's not false the way it is, right? Because we would presumably consider the prosecution for nonviolent actions as well. So what are you recommending we say there? I'm <laughs> wondering if anybody else feels like the or nonviolent needs to be there uh, or is leaving it there just fine then let's move on like it, in a way i feel like it doesn't necessarily hurt us but it does sort of uh take the focus away from what the policy is supposed to be about mm -hmm. yeah i don't think nonviolence should be in there what i'm debating with myself is do we say any unlawful violent actions or just any unlawful actions? Yeah. I think violent needs to be in there because you're working off of the definition of one, two, two three, four, one through six is defining what violence is. Yeah, I think. Unlawful modifies both violent and nonviolent, and there could be unlawful yet nonviolent action. So for two extra words, I don't, yeah, to me, yeah. It, it doesn't bother me having it in there because you could do an unlawful nonviolent action like. Right, but wouldn't that be in our right. nonviolent illegal stuff that's not violent policy? I mean, in a way, that's kind of already covered by, you know, you, you've got to obey the law. Um, so my, my guess is, what is the purpose of this policy? Is it to specifically talk about workplace violence and what we're going to do in the case of workplace violence? It just seems like, yeah, you're kind of throwing in some nonviolent as well. Um, and, and so I guess I don't feel that strongly about it. Um, Nor do I. Yeah. Well, if, if nobody's worried about it, I would say inertia has set in and it's probably going to stay. I don't think it does any harm to have it in there. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so we're then just going to leave it the way it's worded? Yeah. Why don't we do that? Okay. Index O. Do you have an IT department? No. Yeah, for the for all and E, I mean these are really things that we do now. All right. Or it's not something that we've had time to focus on. And I meant to look back because there's a couple of policies at the end that we were thinking we were going to find. Yeah. Anyway, so I think these might be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, reading this, I wasn't sure do we have an IT department. Do we have a land? Do we have a. I, I, you know, yeah. I don't know if any of these are, or which of these are relevant. Right. Well, not many of them. Right. We're going to look for alternate policy. We don't really reference it anywhere. Like we'll find it. Through. I don't see in the larger policy where these are referenced. I don't look before because I couldn't find anything. I don't see anywhere in the in the other policy where the two are even mentioned, but obviously they were attached. So how do we want to handle? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think. It sort of goes back to, I think, where we would like to get to and where we are now, I guess, in terms of, you know. I think it was more of the Appendix P that I, that made me a little bit more concerned than O.
you know, all sort of sets the, the standards for yeah, it's just the expectations mm -hmm. and it sets the, the standards for the 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 actions that are allowed and not allowed while using the town's IT resources. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of well, I don't have I, I think that's I think that's fine. I didn't have much to say about that, but in terms of the access control policy, I'll just say it's not something that we do now. Um, So, for example, sure. passwords don't expire in six months. Right. We don't have we don't have overall password standards. Mm -hmm. Um, best practice would be would would be yes, we should. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, I seems, this seems like a suggestion of where we should be going, but we're, we're, we're not there and we don't have IT department. I'd almost wonder if we to put this in the file for when we do feel we need it. I don't, I don't know. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that could be a future action, whether for this committee or for somebody in our IT department, uh, <laughs> to figure out what should we have, how do we make that happen? Because every department must have a computer, right? That they have their own passwords and things, right? More or less, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah and then, for, yeah, for some things, um, I'm just going from how things work, go where I work. When I log into my laptop, yes, I have my own password for my own laptop. But for other things, if I want to log into something that's on a server, that has to have, um, uh, uh, well, it can be a different password, but um, you don't just put in your password, uh, you get a little text with a code and then you put in the code or there's an app that you can put on, hey, are you trying to log into such and such server? And it goes, so it's called the two-factor authentication. Uh, Google Drive has it now. You can turn on two-factor authentication, things like that. So, the, I mean, the, the standards keep evolving, right? So the access control policy would be someplace where we would have to really keep, um, keep updating it. And uh, so I guess my question is, does this belong in the personnel policies or should it be a separate, should IT be something separate from personnel policies? It doesn't, I don't know whether that's really the right place for it in a way, but I, I, it doesn't probably matter that much. If it's a policy, it's a policy. And it's the same board that would be um, that would be generating it. Um, but yeah, computer security is not something that I'm an expert in, but I just know as a user, it's getting more and more uh, com complex. Like for example, here they talk about passwords being eight letters and should have numbers and capitals and things and like that. Um, that's no longer the standard. <laughs> uh, now it's uh, it should be 14 digits are longer um you should make and uh uh and there's there's tricks to coming up with ones that you can remember as well but um it's yeah this is not going to be figured out by us right here in this room but it might be a important item to put on our new town administrator's plate hey look at this this is relatively up to date um how do we get there and see what we can do about it. So I kind of like Keith's idea of, can we put this one to the side and use it as a goal? And then um, 
amend it, amend the personnel policy to include it when we're there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and I and there's going to be a, there already has been a a little push, and I suspect there's going to be a shove very soon from from Maya, the the company who provides insurance for the town. It also provides cyber liability insurance um, about two factor right, that two factor authentication for all work machines that are that are used by the town. Um, and then, you know, there's a, that, that's just something that will have to be investigated as to how that will be done and yep. uh, whether it's, you know, on whether, whether you get a, a code over your phone and then it's, are you getting codes over your personal phone? It, it's. Yeah, um, yeah, there's, there's normally, there's more than one way. Normally you can, um, uh, at least the system we use where I work, you can. Uh, use that app, or if you don't have a cell phone, and honest to God, there are Smith College professors who don't have a cell phone, uh, you use your work phone, and the voice will tell you, here's your code, or you answer yes or no, that sort of thing. So you can do it on a landline. You can send a, and everybody would have a landline phone, but I'm not sure that <laughs> the, you sort of need a direct line instead of one where you've got to punch in the number one or two to get to your phone so that yeah. uh, work phone might not really work yeah but this might this task might align well with i, I think there's going to be a push from my uh, to possibly even deny coverage to you know, as as you don't have who don't meet a certain threshold of standards because they obviously yeah. want to mitigate the risks so yeah. i mean they talked about it last year um so it's something that we may see in that, that policy renewal time and whatever that is, June or July. So that is that is an input for us for what our policy needs to look like because we need, at a minimum, to meet their standards. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So shall we pull this one for the time being? I would say that with both and P, so do the P section as well. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, yeah, I can go. Yeah, it's not like if we omit O that it's going to be okay for people to do, uh, let's see, A through P on that page, you know, furthering their illegal acts and including violation of criminal or civic laws. It's not like those things are going to be allowed if this gets delayed. Um, right. My only question would be, early on, do we ever reference this policy for a lot of references? I didn't see it anywhere. Okay. Yeah. I have one very quick question on, oh, at the very beginning, they refer to individual agencies may choose to issue additional policies governing the use of towns uh, ITRs. Are they thinking of individual agencies within the town there, or is that because I don't know that we have individual like like the police department might have additional policies? Is that's how I'm reading it? Is that um is that a correct reading? I could see uh, uh, so well. They're sort of. I'm, I'm trying to think about town resources. I'm, I'm thinking the town clerk. We have a state provided town clerk computer, and there are additional policies related to that. Oh, so they wouldn't have to be within the town. They could. So that's why it's kind of this overly broad. Individual agencies it seems. So, but it's yeah. okay within or without, within or from without of the town. Okay. I would think so. Yeah, I just want to know what it meant. I wasn't uh, suggesting we change that. Uh, appendix two, I have a yep. comment in regards to, again, we sort of talked about it a while ago when we were talking about receiving the harassment section 
and this, if an employee walks in, they're going to have to sign and say they read and reviewed the policies. Are they going to do it right then and there before they can walk out? Or should we change that somehow to just say that they've been given them their that they received it? Or do we have them acknowledge received here and then give them a time frame? Yeah. A week, a month. Right. And they have to then sign a review. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying you're not going to read 97 pages while you sit there right. for the when your first day of work. Town person to, to say, come on, hurry up. I'm sorry <laughs> that. People should come out and come up with an acceptable way there to handle that. Maybe it's when prior to their first day of employment that they, you know, obviously they're going to probably receive this when they're. When someone gets hired and they may, maybe they have a two week notice that they give their prior employer that, or come up with some kind of language here. Or maybe they don't get it till their first day. Um, I think that's. You, either way, but you can't expect them to sign it right then and there I, saying it, all of it. They, yeah. they could sign a receipt acknowledge. This is what they did at my law firm for everybody lawyers included and then and it's a little bit of a headache but ask for i first receipt acknowledge the day you get it and two weeks later acknowledging that you had a chance to read it at your convenience you know whether they did or didn't um yeah that's how they did it at my firm and our firm three probably three times as many employees and half a small uh, employee handbook this is just a very detailed employee handbook for, but I've said that before, so now I'm repeating myself. But you, you I mean, it's two steps, but it, that's not that hard to have them acknowledge receipt when they get it and then ask them to acknowledge they've had adequate chance to read it at their convenience, whether they do or don't. Well, if we work with this same form, yeah, I'll just split it right and have them come back and sign that same form the second time two weeks later. Works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seven pages. Did we want to lift that with Brenda? We had a Brenda, we had a question for oh, yeah. you on Yeah, something we did last time. It wasn't jury duty, but it was like if you're a witness or something like that, what is yeah. our policy? Oh yeah, I saw that in the minutes. Um, and I don't know that I can answer it off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure. It that being a witness is different than jury duty. Having just been a witness in a federal case, well, not that it mattered because they weren't going to pay me anyway for being a witness in their case. Uh, anyway, I'm digressing. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but if you give me a chance to look at it, I'll I'll get back to you. I'm pretty sure as an employer, you're not legally obligated to pay for them to be a witness if they're subpoenaed. Probably whether it's state or federal, they'll get some kind of compensation from the trial court, whichever it is. So I don't know off the top of my head, but I don't, it's not the same as jury duty, at least in my mind. But maybe Brian knows better or someone else thinks better. Um, and I think it would depend on whether you were subpoenaed and what the nature of the trial was. Was it connected to your town duties and i guess i didn't pick up in the minutes if you're talking about if you're subpoenaed in connection with your town duties well then yes i would imagine that that's a different story than um but i i don't know the answer is the short answer too late for short answer but i don't know um yeah but I'll, i'm happy to look at it 
and tell you and try to do it before Brian leaves us one week from today. But if not, we'll we'll incorporate it one way or another. Do you know what other towns do, Brian, on that? Um, I don't. My 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 sense was that if you were subpoenaed for something unrelated to work, then you're not paid for it. That was my sense of how it worked, but I don't know for sure. Right. Well, Keith, you must have had employees who've encountered that or no? Um, no, I've never, we've never had employees that have been subpoenaed or anything like that. To... Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm not even sure you're, ob I mean, I was subpoenaed in a federal trial in connection with my work at Dory Wallace. But I would never try to collect money from them, but I I think the feds, well, I know the feds paid me for my trial. I don't think you're obligated as an employer, but I suppose you might do it, we might do it, you know, as an act of good faith. If you're subpoenaed to go to court and they can't work on that day, maybe try to figure out something. But let me see if I can figure out if there's any law on that by calling one of the employment lawyers at my old law firm and then going from there. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it seems at least that could this be, could you get unpaid leave granted? You know, you're not counted as being uh, missing from work and, you know, even if you're not paid. Um, do, would we have a policy where we we would normally grant unpaid leave in the case of uh, of being subpoenaed to be a witness in some other court? I, I mean, that seems like a reasonable place to be, but... Uh, I look forward to hearing what your employment lawyer has to say. Well, let's find out first what the law is and then figure out, because it must not come up all that often, if ever. But yes, I'll first try to find out what the law is. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we've made it through the, the first trap. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, we're gonna, we were going to compile this and then it was going to go off to the department heads for input before it comes back to us is that how it seems like we talked about um that? Or was that? i i don't recall which if we did the committee wanted to look at it one more time or all the edits and then off the department heads or simultaneously i i don't recall i think simultaneously wouldn't hurt to i mean to get it to happen sooner Okay. okay, then the next item on our agenda is to begin to review and discuss the first draft of the FY24 survey. So Jess did all the hard work. Thank you, Jess. Thanks, Jess. The track. That's right. That's, that's, that's the keyword. That's, <laughs> that's all that matters. So everybody should have a copy in front of them. Yeah. And I don't know. Uh, so I guess my my suggested approach would be we look at this tonight and we have questions or you know, if who wants to follow up or something doesn't look right, then we can call Jeff to follow up. Well, I'm volunteering, Jess, of course, right now. But, <laughs> I was going to um, volunteer myself anyway, so perfect. If there's something that we should be looking at, um, you know, let's let's investigate it, and then at the next meeting, um, take a look. Um, just as as an aside, I just quickly checked the the CPI numbers for the Northeast and New England for January 2024, and Northeast was two and a half. I think the CPI is at two and a half percent. And the New England region is at two percent. So back more in line with what we traditionally see Good. or have seen, at least prior to the pandemic. So the northeast was northeast was what? Two and a half. Two and a half, and New England was two. Two. Yeah. Okay. That was just I didn't look at any of the information behind it, but I can look quickly. Just to give us a sense of where where it might land. Mm 
The ones in blue are kind of outliers. So, the, so good question. The ones in blue are are ones that are excluded from the formulas. Okay, that was my next question. Is are they in the formula? So it's either uh, a lot of it. So the town administrator one, West Hampton has an executive assistant, which is a quasi town administrator role. It doesn't have the full responsibilities. Um, I'm not sure about that Shelburne number of 940 for the assistant assessor. I don't know if that's an annual thing. But we can look into that again. And then fire chief, um, I'm fairly certain Ashfield and Hatfield are full time. And then for the police chief, what stands in, I believe, is part time and home part time. So just trying to get a little bit more of a accurate mm -hmm. right here. Okay. I guess my question is, I was just getting this tonight. There's, do we think we can go through it tonight or we want to? I think it's worth taking time to go through okay. at, at mm -hmm. whenever people can have the opportunity to. Do we think there will be more information forthcoming? Um, most likely not, but I am more than happy to push for more information. Um, so if you guys have questions, feel free to ask send them my way. Um, I have contacts now for all of these towns. Before, um, I was not getting um, responses, but now I am. So, well done. So one of the one of the ones we don't have good comps for is the community development administrator. Um, don't know that most of these towns have that position. When when I, when we originally conceptualized the position, we looked at the range of um, what Percog was paying their planners, their entry level planners. Um, I don't know if it just might be an outside sort of mm -hmm. comparison to look at the community development position. I don't know if you're interested in, in seeing what that is. We're thinking it's not really, I don't, we're not going to get any sort of sense of where that position should be with these towns. There are other towns that are hiring like grant writer, you know, so in, that is what the, we've utilized the, that position for to do a, go after a lot of that stuff. So, yeah. Um, and Deerfield just hired somebody. Deerfield just, yeah, yeah. that's but a significantly higher rate than. I understand that, but is there, can we go after that? That data as well. So there's yeah. going to be some other towns that, that might think, call and their their staff. Like you know, I, I, what's dear to call their staff? That person. Um, uh, we can also get the Burkhog survey to see what they have. I mean, it's clear there's there's nothing there. Or any comparison. Right. Well, I think those are all kind of reasonable things to compare to. If we, even if we only have like one or two towns that have hired someone like that, I think Brian's right about looking at what the FERCOG planners and so on. That uh, that would also be a reasonable comparison, right? Uh, think about other ones, but we don't have usually don't have good recreation. Yeah, our recreation director. Yeah. Or coordinator, I mean. Water superintendent is another one we traditionally struggle with. And that, that position had a significant raise after all the budgets were adopted last year. Kind of with not necessarily going through the traditional process. The one that we are most low on is labor part-time. 
Do we have any sense? Yeah, that one is way down. Um, and I'm just looking here. Let's see what, where's Hatfield on it? Um, Middle. Hatfield says operator labor 2906. They just posted that way. I was looking at the one, two lines below that, the one that's minus 28%. Then Hatfield doesn't have a number there. There's operator, laborer, and laborer. Are those two really two different things, or are they supposed to be the same thing? Operator, part time, and laborer, part time are two, two separate things. Correct. But I believe we pushed. We bump up operator part time last year because there was concern about being able to find somebody with the CDL correct to plow snow correct. in the winter. Yes, but I don't think we adjusted anything to do with the waiver at that time. That is correct. The waiver got left alone. That's very uncommon. It's mostly when I in an operator needed someone to drive a truck with a CDL license. Um, anyways, Hatfield presently has a, a job posting in there for operator labor, and this was just went in just recently out. It says from 2658 to 2906. Well, the 2906 is what they list, is what is listed here. And my comment was that even at, even at the low end of 2658, when right. like we have an employee that has to drive through Hatfield to get greatly that's making about two dollars an hour less. I, I really think we need to address that. And another another thing that I, I took a the liberty of doing also is um I talked to Bob Karish, who owns and operates Karish no Karish Oil. And obviously, their drivers need CDL licenses as well as we do. He doesn't have anybody working on his payroll under $30 an hour, um, is what he told me. So they don't, they, while they, they need a CDL license in Waitley in the highway department, you also need to have a hosting license to operate the equipment like the bucket loaders and the excavator and things of that nature. So um, it's just another food for thought that the the towns around are really struggling to to get qualified applicants, and there have been other towns. Uh, was it? I believe it was Coleraine recently ended up going to a town meeting and transferring money from their salary account because they couldn't find an employee. And they had to hire an outside contractor to, to help them through the winter long snow because they no one wants to work for Thomas anymore. <sighs> so it would help to look at so FURCOG has their survey and they also have their regional, you know, they have their Franklin County survey and then they have their uh, regional type, and they have 12 communities, 12 to 15 communities outside of Franklin County that they track. Yes. So it might be worth looking at the the highway department as a whole to see what else is going on, because that might, that might also show, and I haven't done that, I don't know what, what, okay. what it will show, but... Was that sent to us in that email? The Franklin uh, County Survey or the uh, FERCOG? Survey. I, think so. one... I don't think he sent it to anybody. I have it. Brian has it. Um, I don't think so. I'll send it now. Okay. Another thing that, just in general, I know we had discussed this a year ago was to try to come up with a better, a better way to to integrate this with the finance committee. And I don't know, here we are a year later, how 
because it got very contentious last year and it was just um we had staff that put in a lot of hours to to research and come up with things and then if it if they're discouraged and depressed when they put all their work and effort into doing something and it, and it just gets put aside. And um, so I just want to make sure that as we go forward that, um, I don't know if we have any suggestions on how to handle this any better than we did last year. Um, I know we had last year, we had a, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the finance committee made a recommendation of support and then the finance committee didn't. And um, so. I mean, the select board did? I mean, that, that's what I meant to say. The select board recommended to accept, but the finance committee didn't. And then it went, you know, went back and forth, which. It, it probably needs to. I'm not saying it doesn't need to go back and forth a little bit. It's just, it's, it was very contentious last year. Oh, yeah. And I, You're right. I know the morale yeah. from employees last year at the, at, after this was all said and done, the morale was pretty much at the lowest it's been in years mm -hmm. for our town employees. Um, yeah. At the outcome, a decent cola came about, but it was still morale in the meantime was low. So are you suggesting they should come and meet with us but at one point I, I, so I, they know what we're discussing and see how we do things when we finalize some of the things before submitting it to them? Because they have the right not to. Yes. But then, you know, yeah, I know. But then they should know how we proceed to find out these things. And I don't think they understand how much work the outside people do for us to get these adjustments. Yeah, we I wanna be, we want to be fair. Go ahead, Brenda. Sure. No, I think that's fair. And you know, I'm well, I was low man on the totem pole on finance committee, and I share your frustration. I think you know that. I think. A few of you know that, um, but I was new to the town. Um, but we have, we had a kind of dormant member who didn't come and she's now off and we have two new members. I can't say exactly how it's going to go because we've only had one um, meeting or maybe we had one in one joint. Um, yeah, I share your frustration. That's really all I can say. And um, that has been true for quite a while. So I, you know, I'm most... hopeful, and, and yes, I think that's a good suggestion to try to share a little bit more um, of the hard work that the personnel committee puts in and the fantastic people we have working in this town and, you know, the maybe slightly too low wages, notwithstanding looking at the comparison chart that we got today, uh, I, that's just where I'm coming from, but you know, I, again, am new on the finance committee and new to the town, sort of. You know, this, when we look at this survey, for the most part, all the positions we try to bring back into the middle, where Waitley is never one that will sit there and say, we're the highest paid in Franklin County, where we struggle most of the time just to stay in the middle of the pack or, you know, at median. And, and that's, um, sometimes that's a, that's a struggle just to, to maintain that. Yeah, and, uh, my take is, is I think there's a lot more conflict around, well, the, definitely on, on a specific position position last year, there was, there was some disagreement, but I think every year there's a there's disagreement over the COLA and out of uh, and the 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 you how to use CPI and what CPI tells us and and how to use that data, I think there's a yep. fundamental disagreement between people on the finance committee and people on the personnel committee and select board. Um, or or a certain 
people on the finance yeah. committee. It may not yeah. be the whole finance committee. Well, we're just going to keep losing people who can go move to Somerville. This was just my first year on the grant writer, go to Somerville and work remotely and get a whole lot more. We're just going to keep losing good people. And that has been my frustration, which I'm sure my frustration is very tiny compared to many others who have a longer history than I have. Sorry, interrupt, Brian. <laughs> But 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 uh, but you know I think the some of the the rhetoric used by some members of the finance committee was what kind of caused the low morale. Um, I I think that was definitely a part of it, and and just kind of not acknowledging the fact of inflation, and that that you know people are not making today what they made in 1956. You know that that's, and and that we need to respond to that, um, and I, I think they just kind of use that as a way to, as a way to kind of stop considering uh, moving forward on raises for people. Uh, I, mean, I think it's a tactic, but it's not a reasonable one. But it's a tactic that they use to kind of like, well, we can't do this because you can't explain to me why there's inflation <laughs> just um, as an experimentalist i just i observe <laughs> and and try to understand right but it, it, to me that's the frustrating part that it was the group who were really unwilling to listen um uh, i shouldn't say a, a group certain people on that group uh, in that group were not really willing to listen at all, and we're quite willing to uh, just call us a bunch of panderers, and that somehow we're you know padding our own checkbooks <laughs> when that is like the furthest thing from the truth here. Um, so I, you know, I, I just that I, I, I don't really know a good solution for that, but I'm hopeful with uh, with the new members on the finance committee that there may be less of this. And there may be people willing to kind of, you know, stick up for people on that committee. I don't know, because we don't know how the new members are. And one of the criticisms, criticism, criticisms about the CPI that, that, that I've heard in that setting is that, well, it's, and I don't know how to address this, but it's not, it doesn't represent this region. It doesn't represent this area. And, you know, the CPI and the information is collected at a, a certain level. And it is what it is. I don't know of any better. Uh, but it's also a percentage, right? It's a percent, not an absolute value. So sure, salaries are higher in Boston, but it doesn't mean the rate at which things are changing is any different. Um, that is, you know, if, if 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 the rate were different in Boston, then there'd be a lot more people moving out here. Um, I, I think we're we are, we are tied to our region in that sense for inflation, right? Because so much of that is caused by things that are um, not going to be cheaper just because you're a hundred miles away from Boston. And and the second argument that I, that I hear is, well, what are the other what are our what are surrounding communities doing? And we're all doing it at the same time. Um, and my response to that is, we're all doing it at the same time. We're all looking at the same data, and we all have a different history of um, coal increases over the past couple of years. Whether you know whether whether good or bad, some communities are on a on a step system or a classification and compensation plan where there's where there's built in increases each year typically so um there are hard comparisons to make with surrounding communities that's the that's the, my two cents we were going to get a salary classification survey done but that was not going to be ready for us till next year is that still on track um, it's on. So, so the idea is that we need to appropriate money at the next oh. upcoming special town meeting. 
So the idea was that it would be yeah. for FY twenty six. Yeah. Okay. We also do not have, or I haven't seen any health insurance scenarios. Um, sometimes that has been looked at as well, depending on what happens for insurance. Premiums would be up 8%. 8%? Yeah. Um, That's the number given, provided by uh, the trust. Number voted on by the trust. Okay. So, I mean, that's, you know, sometimes we've looked at trying to keep employees whole, not, not necessarily make more, but not lose money. So in terms of next steps, if people want a chance to digest the, the salary survey, um, we can do a little bit of research for the community development administrator position. We can look at the, I sent the, the FERCOG survey. I got that. I just, yeah, I just sent that out. If we want to just take a glance at the other positions that they have, although they're not, we don't identify them as directly comparable, but it, I mean, it gives us a sense of what our communities are doing. Yeah, I think we should take the opportunity to look this over a little more and we'll discuss it at our next meeting and hopefully have a little bit more maybe on the community development. Um, would you like to look at the recreation coordinator as well? Or is that something we don't have a lot of information? One. Yeah, one. I know the airfield has one. And again, that's a full-time position. Um, Deerfield's not been one of our comparing counties. Again, we stopped using Deerfield a while ago because the Finance Committee wanted a better comparison of communities. And even though Deerfield's our neighboring community, they're a little bit bigger. And so some of the ones that we are now comparing ourselves to like Hinsdale, Mass. Out in the Berkshires, at the time Hinsdale stacked up very well in Waitley with Waitley for things like the um, the average salaries that people make and the tax base and things of that nature. Hinsdale really looked comparable to us, so that's why that one got used. Um, so we tried to address the finance committees concerns years ago when we would say, well, again, we'd say, well, Deerfield's paying this and our Greenfield is paying this. And they would say, well, you can't compare Waitley to Greenfield. And yeah. so we said, what what do you want us to use for comparison? And that's when they threw out the, like, you know, some of that criteria that at the time it was Mary Ellen Cranston put together and came up with a list of these communities that we're presently using as being very comparable to us. Do we have documentation of what those criteria were? Yes. Yep. It may be worth sending that around just for, Again. for our own. Yep. It, it sounds like if this comes up in conversations, we should all be prepared with that. Okay. Did you pull that out of the file? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, so is everybody um, comfortable with reviewing this stuff and addressing it at our next meeting? Yeah. Yes. Is there, okay, is there any unanticipated issues? If not, next meeting. Yeah, what's, uh, what's our next meeting looking like? If it's two weeks, that would be Monday, the 11th of March. That's okay with me. That's fine. Fine. Ready? Yep. Good. Okay. So the 11th, 6 p.m. All right. Midnight for me.
I'll be zooming. Oh I'll be zooming in from Stockholm. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Do we want to move it up to? Is moving it up to five? An option to. Oh, Joyce. Well, it depends on. I'm okay. Uh, five. I can do five, Brenda. Sure. Okay. Oh, you're willing to move it to five? You right. guys. Yes. So eleven okay. o'clock. Yes. <laughs> well, I make better decisions at eleven than I do at midnight, anyway. So. <laughs> I am because I've got so many meetings in this time range. I'm sort of considering sliding my clock up so I don't, you know, start work at ten, come back at eight, and then be up uh, a little later and so on. I'll be like a teenager. That's I need to adopt a teenager schedule. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to turn? So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. A roll call vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 it's time to talk with. Joyce. Aye. Brenda. Aye. Susan. Aye. Betty. Aye. And myself. Aye. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you. See you a bunch of you tomorrow. <laughs>